In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Good morning, everybody, today. I said, Good morning. Good morning. The new year, good morning for you in Jesus' name. This day is not like any other day before. It's a new day. It's a new week. It's a new month. Got to be a new year. But you know, there are some people that walk the same old, old road. And I want to get to a new, new destination. And even Satan says it never happens like that. It's what we sow that we reap. If you go on walking the same path you ever walked, saying the same thing you ever said, and doing the same thing you ever did, you're going to get to the same destination. If you want to change your life, you want to change your destiny, the only way to do that is to say, it's a new year, what's it? great opportunity for you for me to be able to make a change and to be able to say because it's a new day and because it's a new week by going to make it a new day a new week a new month and a new year and everything is going to turn around in your life in jesus name you know there's some people they wake up in the morning they start frowning that's what they've been doing for years and the whole world is frowning at them. They say, I can't understand. Everybody hates me. Cheer up. When you put a give, it, give, give the world a smile and the world will give you a smile back. There's some people that you know, it's like they're cutting the whole world on their back. And you know this has happened. Don't tell me what has happened. Tell me what is happening right now. And tell me what is going to happen in the new year. It's not what happened before. It's not what has, you know, I've gone through this. I've gone through this. If you have gone through it, why are you still there? Going through means that you're not in that same place anymore. And you're not thinking like you used to think and acting like you used to act because you went through. And if you say, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, then go through. And then when you, are going, when you go through, then have it done. Leave it behind you because you go through. When the children of Israel went through the Red Sea, they were never there anymore. But you know some people say, I'm going through, I'm going through, and they're still in the middle of the Red Sea. I have gone through. I said, I have gone through. And that's the reason why the old, old year is gone and the old lifestyle is gone. And then we say in the first day and the first week and the first month of this new year, everything is going to be new in Jesus' name. And I want you, you know, to help you. You know, and sometimes you don't know what a day is going to bring. But you can make it whatever happens during the day. You can make it the very best for you by the attitude you have. It is not what happens to you that matters. It is what you think about what is happening. What you feel about what's happening. What you're doing about what's happening. And if you will come to this new year with a new attitude, and just say, I've gone through and I'm not going to remain where I've gone through. And I'm going to brighten up and cheer up and make it a new day and a new week. And it's going to be so for all of us in Jesus' name. And, and you know something, if you, uh, whatever you plant in the lives of other people, it's what you will plant back to. That's why it says, give, shall be given unto you. You see, some people, they think about money. Or they say, give, I don't have any money. What it means is, Give me a frown, and I'm likely to give you back a frown. Give me a smile, and I'm likely to give you a smile, and give me a good word, an appreciative word, and give me something that makes me happy. I'm likely to sow back into your life what makes you happy. But give me something that is pinching, that is painful. Give me something that you make me to, be, to say, I don't want to live here anymore, and I'm likely to have, give you back. Watch it, watch, you know, also will make you fear. I don't want to stay with this man anymore. Whatever you sow, and it said, Je Jesus said, that give, give a smile, give a good word, give some appreciation, give a good attitude, and give a change, a transformation. And it is what to give will be given back unto you, press now, shaking together, running over. No wonder. That's why trouble runs over in the lives of some people. It's just piling up and piling up because that's what they give. They give all the people hard time and then the rest of the world is giving them hard time. I'm going to sow something good into somebody's life today. 
I said, I'm going to sow something good into somebody's life today. It is when you sow that and say, I'm going to give whatever I want. If you want a smile, give a smile. If you want money, give money. If you want anything good, give that thing. And then signs and wonders in your life in Jesus' name. I just know that every day of this year for me is going to be filled with signs and wonders. Then I turn to the right, I see signs and wonders. I turn to the left, I see signs and wonders. I go to the front, I see signs and wonders. I go to my back, I see signs and wonders. I go to, you know, Britain, I see signs and wonders. Go to America, I see signs and wonders. Go to India, I see signs and wonders. Go to South Africa, I see signs and wonders. I go all over Nigeria, I see signs and wonders. Why? Because I'm going to sow, I'm going to sow, I'm going to sow. What brings signs and wonders into my life? And if you will do that and make a change and make a turn around and say, Oh Lord, this is going to be a year of signs and wonders. It's going to be like that your life in Jesus' name. Raise your voice to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm getting ready for the signs and the wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders for a praying church. You tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. You want to see signs and wonders? Begin to have a change of attitude. And say, Lord, it's going to be a year of signs and wonders. A year of great, great, marvelous things in my life and through my life. Whatever you go through, go through. Whatever you go through, go through. I don't remain in that same old place. Going through. Going through. And it shall be given unto you. Press down, shake it together, run it over, shall make give it your bosom. What you give is what you get. What you sow is what you reap. A change, a transformation in the new year. And if that is what you do, that's how the change comes. That's how those miracles, sealings, deliverances, signs and wonders, that's how they come. A new congress, a new attitude will produce a new congress. A new prayer style, a new faith, a new love, a new understanding. New attitude to life. That is what produces a new year. Make it a new year by the attitude you have. Give me that same old stuff that you're going to have, the same old thing that used to happen. Give me that same old look and you're going to have that same old thing that you saw happen. Say that same old word. So that same old seed. And you're going to have the same old tree that grew up and you're spending a whole life trying to cut it down. Plant some new seeds today. Do some, th some new things today. Do some new direction today. Jesus name we pray and everybody said a new amen our Father, we do thank you today. What a new day and what a great thing you are going to do for us today. Lord, we accept and receive it already in Jesus' name. I was saying, Oh Lord, that according to your what signs and wonders will follow your people in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, we'll never be the same again. Our lives will not be the same again. Our ministries will not be the same. 
I church will not be the same again in Jesus' name. Lord, we just pray that this year, everywhere we turn, there will be signs and wonders. Everywhere we turn, there will be miracles. Everywhere we turn, there will be answers to prayers in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life, even from this very moment in Jesus' name. The past year is gone, a new year is begun, and Lord, we pray that we'll see something new every day of this year in the mighty name of Jesus. We well, thank you, Lord. We pray you confirm every word and every promise and every prophecy in the life of every one of us in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to bury the old and to resurrect the new, so that, Lord, something new will actually emerge in every life in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you very much. We're looking at the Word of God. It's in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. You might have noticed that actually we're marching to the Acts of the Apostles during this Congress. And yesterday we started with Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 1. What Jesus began to do, what he began to teach. And you'll find signs and wonders among those things that Jesus began but to do and then to teach. And we're looking at what happened now to the church, how the church came together. And then they lifted up their voice to the Lord. And they prayed. And the result of such prayer, not only in the little circle, but in the bigger circle, in the world, in the community around them. And look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 24. It says, And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea, and all that there that is, that is in them, that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why, that the heathen rage, and the people imagine vain things, the kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord, and against his Christ, his anointed, for of a truth, against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel, were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined, before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants, that with all boldness they may declare, and they may speak thy word. Then it says, by stretching out thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders, everybody says signs and wonders, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. That was the prayer they prayed. They preach to the Lord. Actually, as you look at when they spend their time with the Lord Jesus Christ, their Savior, their Lord, their Master, their King, you will see what the Lord had told them about prayer. He had told them men ought always to pray and not to preach. And their challenges, men ought always to pray and not to pray. And their difficulties, men always ought to pray and not to pray. And is there persecution, men ought always to pray and not to pray. Is there criticism or slander or something you cannot understand coming against your life, men ought always to pray and not to pray. They were not to complain, they were not to murmur, they were to pray, and they were to pray with all prayer and supplication. They were to pray effectual pardon prayer of a righteous man. And they were to pray sometimes who were fasting. They were to pray listening to these travailing warriors' prayers, not warriors' prayer. That is, you are not supposed to be a warrior. That is, you worry, worry, worry. But you are supposed to be a warrior. And because you are worried, you are praying travailing warrior's prayer. You are praying and pursuing at the same time because you are like an army of soldiers fighting to take over new territories. The Lord had told them to pray to the Lord of the harvest. And that's, that's what they did. They came to the Lord. They said, Behold, they are threatened. We want to evangelize. We want to reach out everywhere. And yet, behold, their threatening and Lord, we are praying now that this is what you will do. It is to take us out of this place. This is too tall. The fire is too hot. The persecution is too great. Take us out of this. He said, No, that all we want is that you give us boldness. That he is uh, if our load is heavy, pray that God will strengthen your backbone, he'll strengthen your shoulders, so that you'll be able to cut and say, Remove my load and remove the weight is too much for me. Just say, Yes, the load is heavy, the load is great. All I need is a 
greater kind, stronger shoulder. I need a stronger backbone that will be able to carry the load that I have. But you know some people, they say, my back is weak and therefore lessen my load. My shoulders are, are cracking, therefore lessen my load. So they say, no. They say, the positions are there. We, we saw it in your word. They said, they are the heathen. If these were Jewish people. These were kind of religious people, but they understood that it's not just religious. They said, the heathen, why are they raging? And the kings of the earth, why are they, spe why are they speaking against the face of the king of kings and the lord of lords? They said, in any case, all we are praying, forgive us the power and the boldness and the courage to be able to declare your word fearlessly and forcefully and faithfully. And that's exactly what God did for them. After they had prayed, they said, Oh, you have said this, that this is not taking you by surprise. God is not waking up and he said, What am I going to do? What am I going to do? They said, We're ready to some too. That even David, the king, the prophet, the priest, this is what he had said, that a time like this will come. And that time now has come. All we are praying for is power from on high. So when we have that power from on high, we'll be able to do signs and wonders, and there'll be healings and deliverances, and many people will come to the kingdom of God, they pray. We're going to pray. I said they prayed and we're going to pray. And you know, sometimes I look at the church and I don't understand why the church is being like they're doing. I'm not just saying of this church, I'm talking of the church at large. This country is going through what we never went through. It's a kind of situation we never went through. You know the story. Maybe you're coming from those areas yourself and you read the stories. If you have not been there, you know what is happening. And the church is still praying the same old dumb prayer. The church is still praying the same lukewarm prayer. The church is still praying the same two minute prayer that never woke up and asked. But then, when you see, there's a new challenge. When you see, there's a new difficulty. I'll say this kind of difficulty, this kind of challenge that we're having that we never had before. There must be another kind of prayer. That's why as you come to this Congress, we're going to be demanding from you after the messages that we're going to really give ourselves to prayer. And when we do that with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind, the Lord is going to answer us in Jesus' name. That's why they came together and they prayed for the salvation of the sinners. They prayed for spiritual power and boldness. They prayed for healing and spectacular miracles. They prayed for signs and wonders. And they prayed for open doors of ministry, for reversing and overturning all the plots of the enemies of the gospel. They prayed for steadfastness and they prayed for courage to stand and to withstand in the evil day. And exactly all those things they prayed for, the Lord answered them. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, and see the response of the Lord to their prayer. And that's how the Lord is going to respond to our prayers in Jesus' name. When you pray with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, with all the desires you have, all the passion you have within you, you forget every other thing. You are not just saying of the old life and the old year. Somebody did this and somebody did that. You just came to the Lord. You said, Lord, I'm not surprised because it's according to your word. And now this is what I'm praying for. I'm praying that you give me boldness, fearlessness, and courage so that I'll be able to face what is happening today and even other things that may happen that I don't know yet. I'll be able to face them. That's how God will say, if that is what you want, it will make you mightier than you ever thought in your life in Jesus' name. And something great, something great, something great will happen to you and through you and for you. And we'll be you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts chapter 4, verse 31. It says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They forgot themselves and they lost themselves in the passion of their prayer. They forgot about all their surrounding. They just lifted their hearts to the Lord, their mind to the Lord, and they prayed. And it says, When they had prayed, when they had prayed, this kind of prayer always arrests the attention of heaven. It says, The place was shaken. When they were assembled together, and it says, and they were all filled, they had been filled before, but the Holy Ghost came into racial power again in, in their lives. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they were, and they spake the word of God with fearfulness, with humility. <laughs> Looking down there after me, those people they want to burn my house, those people they want to do this, oh Lord, but we must preach. And I don't know why they have not taken out to us out of this place. All right, believe on the Lord Jesus. Don't say I told you, but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But don't tell, don't tell other people I told you. Hold it yourself. Is that how they did it? Tell me out loud. It says they preach the word of God with boldness. That supernatural boldness the Lord will give to us in Jesus' name. 
that everywhere we go, in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Lord, in the boldness, in the courage, the conviction that the Almighty God gives, we're going to declare that word with fearlessness because the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity. He has given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And when he prayed all over once again, what a great authority came, what a great boldness came upon them and they declared the word of God with boldness. And then it says in that verse 30, it says on the multitude of them that believe they were all with one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which they possessed, which he possessed, was his own. But they had all things come up. The unity was great. And the togetherness and the sharing and the fellowship was very great. They just forgot themselves. Not thinking of little me or big me and little you. They were not thinking of, you know, what I have and what he doesn't have. They just brought everything together, all their resources together. They said, this is something we must pay for. We are willing to pay the price. Everything we have, everything we've got, we're going to give so that this gospel will go out. And that's how they evangelize their world. And that's how we're going to evangelize our world in Jesus' name. We're going to do it. I said we're going to do it. In the strength of the Lord, we're going to do it. In the might of the Lord, we're going to do it. In the consecration, the submission, the surrender of everything with God, we're going to, just like the did it, and they brought everything. They are not holding anything back. They don't say, okay, I can give this, I can't give that. It's not just talking about money. Of course, the money is there, and the properties are there, and every and the skills are there, and the abilities are there. Everything they brought, and that's what they brought for the propagation of the gospel. And that's what the Lord is telling us today, that if we're going to see the same revival as we saw in those difficult days when they went through painful times and persecution, if we're going to see the same revival, we're going to be able to say, here is what I have, and I surrender everything to the Lord Jesus Christ and for the propagation of the gospel, and we're going to see this land coming back to the Lord like no other time in Jesus' name. And then he tells us, as we look at that Acts chapter 4, verse 33 now, it says, I will give power, give the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great was, and great grace was upon them all. The Lord answered their prayer, the Lord will answer our prayer. He visited them in a mighty way. He will visit us in a mighty way in Jesus' name. He gave them the signs and the wonders. And he says that the wonders will visit and will also attend our ministries one and all in Jesus' name. I'm going to look at three points. Number one, prevailing prayer for signs and wonders. Prevailing prayer for signs and wonders. The kind of prayer that prevails. The kind of prayer that overcomes. The kind of prayer that first of all prevails within your soul. Prevails within your own system. Prevails prevails within your family and prevails in the local church and prevails in the community prevailing prayer for signs and wonders number two positive purpose of signs and wonders why do we have to have signs and wonders what's the positive purpose of signs and wonders positive purpose of signs and wonders what it does why the church ought to have signs and wonders why you ought to pray for signs and wonders why you ought to have your personal ministry and our local church and in the national church why we need to have signs and wonders and we're not talking about just one man at the headquarters being able to do signs and wonders we're talking about the whole church we're talking about the ministers of god we're talking about the prophets and the evangelists and the and the teachers and the and the, uh, the evangelists and the apostles every everyone being able to have those signs and wonders and if you really serious about you and say, Lord, this is what I want and this is what I need to be able to do the work, to come to you at this time, both man and woman. The Lord will give us the signs and wonders in Jesus' name because it has a purpose. It gives progress. Gives real power. It gives real penetration of the gospel in the communities when there are signs and wonders. Number three, present day partakers of signs and wonders. The present day partakers of signs and wonders. We're looking at number one, prevailing prayer for signs and wonders. And we're coming back to Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. And we're going to see what these people did before they could have the signs and the wonders. And as we look at this, you'll then be able to see if that's what they did and God has not changed, and the Holy Ghost has not changed, and Jesus has not changed, and the Word of God has not changed, and the same power the seed that was sow, it has not changed, you sow the seed, any seed you sow today, like they sowed it 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 2000 years ago, the same seed will still grow, and that's what the Lord is telling us, do what they did, and then you'll be able to have what they had. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles again, chapter 4. 
Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 25. When they had, had, when they had that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. They lifted up their voice to God with one accord. They lifted up their voice unto the Lord with one accord. The same prayer request, the same passion, the same desire, the same goal, the same aspiration, the same expectation, the same thing they wanted from the Lord. They lifted up their voice with one accord. No disagreement and no discord and no pulling down and pulling on, no sharing apart. The same, the same mind that they had. And when we come together like that and we have the same goal, you want to see the salvation of sinners, you want to see the salvation of your community, you want to see the salvation of your local government, your province, you want to see the salvation of the people around you. And then you lift up your voice with the people of God, the same thing that we have in mind, and the same goal, and the same desire, the same passion, and the same fruit we want to see of evangelizing the land. When you lift up your voice with one accord like that, God honors unity, He honors fellowship, He honors that togetherness that to bring to the and say, Lord, this is what we want. But when you are praying for this, and He is praying for that, and she is praying for that, and there are divergent things, that is not how to pray. But they lifted up with their voice with one accord, and then they said the same thing and prayed the same prayer. They were in total agreement, and then they said, Thou art God, who which made heaven and earth. That is, they made the limit, the limit of His power, the unlimited strength that created the whole universe. They said, this is little, this is being off. You can handle this because your power is so great that you made the heavens and the earth. It was traveling prayer that brought that triumphant power. Traveling prayer brings triumphant power. As they lifted up their voice with one accord, they saw the threatness of men, but then they called on God, the Almighty, the All Powerful, the Omnipotent God, and they said, You are God. You have made the heavens and the earth. What can you not do? They said, You are God, and therefore, because because you are all these are men, and in fact everything they are saying, as, as high as their prostitution may be, your own power is higher, your power is unlimited. They said, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? They said, all that these people are doing is imagination, imagination of a vain thing. And all those vain shadows, everything will vanish away when reality comes. They said, the reality is the power of the Lord. But all the things that all these people imagine, they are vain, vain things. When you think about the persecution that the church may be going through, or the persecution that you may be going through like that, something is going to happen. I said something is going to happen. Actually, they went back to some two. Look at some two and see what they were talking about. Look at some two and see the kind of uh, professor, the prediction that they are. They knew this ahead of said made by Sophia before them. And I read the video of the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing. All those uh, vanities of imagination that the people imagine said they are going to knock everything and sweep everything away because they mean nothing. It says in the sphere, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed. It says all the counsel they take is not against us, we are just men. We are servants, we are servants of the Master, we are disciples of the Lord Jesus, we are followers of the Savior. It's not against us, it's against the Savior. If you saw that, that whatever the people are putting up, they're not putting up against you, against the church, against men or women, they're putting against the Almighty God. And it says in verse, in verse 3, so they're saying, let us break their hand, their bands together uh, asunder and cast away their cause from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. And he said, we know what the end result is going to be because the Lord is going to love them to scorn. And then they went on to say in verse, in verse 6, yet, in verse 5, it says, Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them, and punish them, and persecute them, and pour his wrath upon them in his own displeasure. Yet have I said, My king, upon my holy hill of Zion, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And then they said, Ask of me, ask of me. And they said, This will not hinder evangelism. And you know, there are people that are immediately super somewhere, and they see some, you know, a vain imaginations of the hidden rising up. They say, Say, they go in this place, rise up and say, Now, you don't touch the gospel anymore, you don't preach the gospel anymore, you can't go there anymore, you can't do anything anymore. 
He said, no. He said, in the midst of that persecution, ask of me, ask of me, that we should pray. And what kind of prayer we pray? We are not praying for ourselves, as I said before. We are not praying that, oh Lord, I will not experience this. And this one is I Our Savior went to the cross, and he told us we must bear the cross. Our Savior suffered. He left him an example for us that we should suffer as we suffer. There's nothing to that. But what the Lord is saying is, in the time of that challenge, in the time of that persecution, in the time of that pressure upon our lives, that we need to understand that the people, even those who are persecuting like Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul the great apostle, that they need the gospel as well. That's why it says at such a time in verse 8, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen. Remember the heathen? Those are the heathen raging. If you go back to verse 1, why do the heathen rage? Those same heathen that persecute him. Those same heathen that are causing problem for that early church. They said, you have said, ask of me. And I will give you the heathen for the inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a porter's vessel. The wise now, therefore, O ye kings and be instructed, ye judges, ye judges of the earth, serve the Lord and with fear and rejoice with trembling. They were, saying, they were telling the people, they are going to get converted, they are going to get converted. I said they are going to get converted. Prevailing prayer for signs and wonders. And you see, when you pray according to the word, according to the prophets, according to what the Lord has said in the word, the Lord is going to answer. I said the Lord is going to answer. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Let's help the church came together. And when the church came together, they studied the word, they studied the promises, they studied everything, the predictions of the word, and then they prayed together according to the words they had studied. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Verse 42 it says, and, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in unity. They continue. They continue steadfastly in the unity of the word. They continue steadfastly according to the word of the Lord. They need to learn anything to break their ranks. And then it says, in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. It's going to happen again. I said it will happen again. You know, there was a time when the people of God are saying, we don't see our signs anymore. And I think in you, your local church, you might be saying that. In your church, in your region, you might be saying that. But the Lord is saying, the time of revival has come again. The time of power has come again. And the time of manifesting that same authority that we used to manifest. I said, the good old days, the good and better days have come here in Jesus' name. As, uh, in Psalm 74. Psalm 74, I'm reading there from verse 9. From 74 verse 9, here was the complaint of the children of Israel. But he turned that complaint around by prayer, by seeking the face of the Lord. And if you will say, I see that the church had signs and wonders. Not just the early church, the church in the Bible, even the church of our day, our own church here, we had signs and wonders. And thank God that, you know, in that place there are still signs and wonders. In that place still signs and wonders. In that place there are still signs and wonders. But we want to see more of it. We are going to see more in Jesus' name. It then came when the children of Israel began to cry out to the Lord. In Psalm 74 verse 9, We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet, neither is there any among us that knoweth how long. When you begin to see that this is really concerned, that in your own local church you have not seen signs and wonders, in your own local church you have not seen signs and wonders, among uh, you know, the leadership around you then you have not seen signs and wonders, because you're concerned. And then you have the passion that something must happen, something will happen in Jesus' name. When you look at the church in the whole country, in the whole country, that we do not have signs and wonders. I mean, by the people who are there, by the pastors who are there, I mean, by the ministers who are there, I mean, by the workers who are there, that, you know, we have to depend on, you know, the signs and wonders coming from abroad before it can get to us. But the people who are there, that they cry not with passion, and they're saying, oh, Lord, if you've done it in, you know, the headquarters church, you've done it in Nigeria, you've done it in that other place, you can do it in a place too. So it's not just a 
kind of a dry religion. It's not just a kind of mechanical religion. It's not just a kind of brain work religion. It's not just kind of a you know, brain knowledge religion that we just go up from day to day. Everything is dry and there's no power and there's no unction. There's no anointing. Everything is dry. There are no signs and wonders. You go through a whole month. There's no miracle. You go through a whole year. There's no miracle. It's just a regular thing and the routine thing and the read my role and you know, we go from day to day and week to week and then we sing our songs and we read our scriptures and we preach all our preaching. Everything still remains dry and then you become concerned and say, what are the signs that we used to see in our need that God will bring back again in Jesus' name? You know, sometimes when a, a preacher remains the same, you know, he comes, uh, you know, the way he came and uh, the other year, he just comes the same way, and then he goes through that routine and goes through everything, and everything, see, and, and you are sitting down there, and everything is like, you know, the water is not hot, and, you know, the message is just like that, and then it's, it's so cold, and so lukewarm, and then we'll finish again. Let us stand up and pray, and we stand and we pray the same old dumb prayer that did that didn't wake up anything, will not even move an edge, and then we go back and then we we'll come back again, and then we we'll go and we we'll come back again. It's going to change. I said it's going to change. Well, if, if, if you know, if, if it doesn't change, I, I think uh, God will make a change. I said God will make a change that the fire will come back to the altar again in Jesus' name. When you cry out to the Lord and you are concerned about your own self, about your own ministry, you are concerned about your family, you are concerned about your local church, you are concerned about the church at large, you say, Lord, this is what we are looking for, I believe it will come in Jesus' name. Psalm 74 again, reading from that, verse, verse 9. We see not our signs, they are our signs. It is what the Lord has promised us. These are the signs that will follow them that believe. How will it happen? I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40. We're looking at verse 20. Let us be a hearer of the word. Do what it says. And if you do what it says, I believe the power will come in your life in Jesus' name. In verse 28, it says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the heads of, of, of the earth, faiteth not, neither is weary. It says, There's no searching of his understanding. He, he, he giveth power to the faith. He giveth power to the faith. He giveth power to the faith. If you're fainting, you're going to. It's going to give you a part today in Jesus' name. Who are the people that, uh, you know, are preaching? I'm coming back to that. I'm coming back to Isaiah. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. In Proverbs chapter 24, the word of the Lord is telling us, uh, you need to diagnose your condition, your spiritual condition. How are you? How's your strength? How's your heart? How's your life? In the things, the challenge is to say, and I'm going through, I'm going through that. If it if, if tells us, it's in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10, if thou faint in the day of adversity, if thou faint in the day of adversity, if thou faint in the day of adversity, what's adversity? Adversity is not to crush you, it's not to destroy you, it's to bring out what is inside you. What's the test? It tells it's not to destroy it, right? It's to bring out the knowledge that is inside him, inside her. What are the opportunities for to be able to express? Hey, have something inside me. Have the word of God inside me. Have life inside me. Have power inside me. Have courage inside me. Have conviction inside me. When adversities come, they're supposed to detect, they're supposed to bring out the conviction you have. And they're supposed to bring out the consecration that you have. And the test of the adversity is not to say, well, you are, you are nobody, is to bring out the thing, all the things we have been planting there and planting and planting there all these years. It is the thing that they bring up, but you know, your faith on the day of adversity, it says, your strength is small. That strength will increase here. I said that strength will increase here. That, you know, sometimes I used to think, we'll just finish the retreat. Why are we here again? We'll just listen to all those messages. And during that uh, December retreat, uh, and I think, uh, is this not a wrong period to bring the people together again? Then I realized something, that all that time of the retreat, we were talking about being more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror, and we're talking about adversity through adversity. And as adversity is the University of the Almighty God, where it develops us and brings us up, I 
and Eliza so all through that time. Some of us were in the kitchen cooking and we have to do it. Some of us were even preaching. Some of us were doing other things. Some of us were taking care of this, uh, taking care of this. And even though the messages benefited all those people, more than Concross was so busy with you here. I said, okay, no wonder. What we miss at that time the Lord is bringing right now. That all the time you have been busy. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And therefore you are not able to increase your strength. You are not able to wait upon the Lord. That's why now that opportunity is gone. You couldn't become more than conquer because what you be saying here, you are you are now here. And as you are here now, the Lord is saying, This is your chance. If this year is going to be a year of power, a year of strength, if it's going to be a year of express, you have another chance right now to wait upon the Lord and then to see that prevailing prayer that will bring signs and wonders in your life. It will happen in Jesus' name. And that's why it says in verse 29 and back to Isaiah chapter 40, it says, He giveth power to the day, to the faith, and to them that have no might, he increases strength, it will increase your strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, I said, but, I said, but, if you knew that, what did it to wait upon the Lord? It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Why? They need to wait upon the Why are you at the Congress? And all through last night, after hearing the message, you are still standing out there, talking and chatting, talking and chatting. Why? If you knew, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Why is it that you know early this morning, instead of burying yourself, maybe on your bed, and saying, Oh Lord, you must do something, and bring revival down. Why is it, is, you know, telephony, telephony? And you're still checking, I'm checking up that one. Ah, is there no internet here? Is there no email there? And why am I, am I going to stay for one whole week? And then I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to go through that. Why is it, if you knew that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, why don't you take this week off and say, this week I'm going to do without all that thing. And I'm going to wait upon the Lord. I'm going to give my time, my attention to the Lord. And whatever I've missed all the passing years, I'm going to get this time. You're going to get it in Jesus' name. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. And they shall run. And they shall not be weary. And they shall walk. And they shall not faint. They will not faint in Jesus' name. The Lord is telling us that if we will actually ask for the sons and wonders, and we are going to pray for daily prayer, He's telling us that we're going to experience, we're going to have all that we have lost in the past, and signs and wonders will come back in Jesus' name. But the question is, what do I need signs and wonders? Why do you need signs and wonders? Why does the local church need signs and wonders? Why do why does the whole church need signs and wonders? Number two, then the positive purpose of signs and wonders. The positive purpose of signs and wonders. It has something. It has something it's going to achieve. And to achieve that purpose in your life, in my life, in Jesus' name. We're looking at John chapter 4. John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, here is what it tells us in verse 48. In John chapter 4, verse 48, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to the people in verse 48. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto him. Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. I've known in many highly placed uh, people when they see signs and wonders, that's what breaks them down. That's what draws them to the Lord. When you see real signs and wonders, a great healing in their lives, a great deliverance in their lives, a great deliverance miracle in their lives, that's what breaks them to the Lord. And Jesus said, except you see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Look at the church, how the church grew. When you saw signs and wonders, Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. In Acts chapter 5, and in from verse 12, Acts chapter 5, verse 12, it says in verse 12, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Many signs and wonders wrought. It's not just in the local church, it's that is in their community, in their provinces. You, you know the church, the early church. They were not just, you know, it's at a confined place, it's at a local place, it's at a little place, you know, just hiding there because of persecution. There were the people that went out, and as they went out, in 
and all those places, communities where they went, all those localities where they went, all those provinces where they went, signs and wonders followed after them. And that's what it says over there in verse 12. It said that there were signs and wonders from among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And then it says, and the rest does not, does no man join himself to them. But the people magnified them. You see, that's the result of signs and wonders. They magnified and said, those people, they're different. Those people, they're kind of high above the rest of us. If you're really looking for something real and something real, something really definite, go to the midst of those people. Those signs and wonders magnified them. It says in verse 14, and believers were the more added to the Lord. More Jesus, both men and women, is so much that they brought forth, they brought forth the sea into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. How many of them? Everyone wonders why you have the church going. Signs and wonders. It will happen again in Jesus' name. It happened in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord had passed that on to us. That the works I do, ye shall do, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to the Father. Those greater works we are going to experience. Those greater works we are going to do is going to be manifesting in every one of our local churches in Jesus' name. When we just say, when we uh, kick off, when we, when we sweep and when we take away all the things that should not divide, all the things that make prayer not to be meaningful, all the things that make prayer to be shallow and, they, and not to be effective, we cast all that and then we come together, the effectual of heaven, of a righteous man, and we bombard heaven with all our desires. And we're saying, Oh Lord, this is what we want. I'm telling you, all the thousands of people, the thousands of people at the DLCC in this uh, time that we're all together, even though separated by different accounts, yet we're all together in this father prayer. The Lord is going to do something. I said the Lord is going to do something. If the people over here, if the people over there, if we bind our hearts together, and what is happening in this new life becomes a real concern to us, and then we forget about ourselves, I forget, forget about the petty little little things and the little the actions during prayer, and we just say, "Oh Lord, this nation, the condition here must change. It will change." I said it will change, but if we allow the bloodletting that is going on, we allow the killings that are good, and it doesn't concern us, and we allow all this uh, rolling up and down, it doesn't concern us. We, we just uh, look at people losing church buildings and personal buildings and businesses, and have everything going up in flames, and it doesn't concern us, and we're still playing the same old trees and just relax as if nothing is happening. How will the country be saved? If the people here will not raise up their heart and their voice before they are saying, look, do something in our land so that the gospel will reach out without any hindrance. I believe that when you pray with that kind of passion, that kind of understanding, signs and wonders will come once again in Jesus' name. And great, great, great will be the victory of the church. We're looking at Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, I'm looking at verses 18 and 19. Paul the Apostle reporting back that this is what happened in his ministry. And this is what is going to happen in our ministry to in Jesus' name. At, uh, in Psalm, sorry, in Romans chapter 15, verses 18 and 19. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. He said, uh, the impact of the signs and wonders, what God did through me in those uh, Gentile nations, in those places, is to make those Gentiles obedient to the faith by word and by deed. He says, through mighty signs and wonders. That's how it happens. He went to all those Gentile territories, all those Gentile provinces, all those Gentile localities, and then they preached the word with signs following. And then he said, mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and Round about unto Illyricum, I fully preach the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strive to preach the gospel, not where Christ was was a name, lest I should build upon another man's foundation.
Christians. You know what he's saying? He said, the places they went, they had no copy of the Bible. The places they went, they, had, they didn't have any kind of real true religion. The places they went, they were not places, they even had churches or synagogues. He said, there was no foundation for me to even build on. And yet he said, when I penetrated all those places, I went with signs and wonders and the power of the Holy Ghost and mighty things happen. It will happen again in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes we go to a place and then you're sent to a place and say, oh, what kind of place is it they have sent me to? There's no deeper light church here. What am I going to pastor? Who am I going to pastor? You are there like Paul the Apostle. When the foundation has not been laid, when the work has been done, and then you go there, if you go there with signs and wonders, it will not take a week, it will not take a month, multitudes will come, and he said the fire of the Holy Ghost burning, and they will come to light, the little candles in that light, that comes from the light of the Holy Ghost in your life and ministry in Jesus' name. If you go, they tell me, if a person has the power to heal, and the power to deliver, in the name of Jesus, and the power to walk signs and wonders, and then he goes to the city, you don't even need a miracle look out church that they don't need any, anybody they don't need any other thing there they just go on the street and you see it and you have a headache you have stomach problem and then before he says you lay hands on him healed in jesus name he'll say where are you where are you coming from who are you and uh, where do you live can i follow you, you say follow me and then you give him the gospel you go to another person you go to the hospital you go to all the places where people have problems and you go with signs and wonders if you go with signs and wonders you are going to see people turning to the lord everywhere instead of all this a uh, dry religion and dry preaching and everything is dry worship and then we, we uh, nothing moves anybody nothing touches anybody nothing heals anybody nothing annoys it no, nothing puts fire desire you know nothing magnetizes us uh, to what you do but when you go with signs and wonders you don't need to have you know some church the Paul the apostle said I didn't have any kind of uh, uh, work there Please, before I got there I when I got there was signs and wonders the people turned to the Lord from Jerusalem to base to base to that, it will happen once again in Jesus' name. I said it will happen in Jesus' name. If we have the passion, the desire, that this is what we're looking for, we're going to see. That's why it says, I went from place to place and I saw it done, and you will go from place to place and you'll see it done. I said you are going to see it done. I'm looking at it now. Point number three is the present day partakers of signs and wonders. Present day partakers of signs and wonders. How is it going to be? And what has the Lord said? Is the present day partakers of signs and wonders? Let us look at Mark chapter 16, where God, where Jesus gave the great commission, and then He said, "This sign shall follow them that believe." As we believe, the signs will follow us in Jesus' name. I see it in Mark, Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to some of the people. All the people are to preach to. Tell me out loud. Every creature, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, and these signs, and these signs, and these signs, and these signs shall follow them. Look up here, brothers and sisters. If we don't tell you, know, talk heart to heart. If I don't tell you the reality of it, who else is going to tell you? You know, when you come over here to the headquarters, oh, what are you looking for? Before you go back, what are you looking for? I want you, you know, I came here this week. I hope I'll be able to see this. I'll be able to see that. That's all you came for. If you have, while you're here now, during this week, if the only thing you can have is you already have the doctrine, you already have the booklet in your hand, you already have all these messages, you already have the tears, three things you have at home, you already have this and this and that, the remaining thing, the power to confirm the world, the signs and the wonders to confirm the world. If you came here this week and you said, if I don't get any other thing this week, I'm going to take something out of this place. The signs that follow believers. Oh, you know, so a missionaries who have to take care of you, we have to, you know, uh, send a ticket in your hand, the ticket following you, so that when oh, you have the ticket in hand, you can come back here when you have to come back. But, you know, I want to make sure I get my ticket. It's good you want to get that. I want to, I want to make sure I get all this benefit and it's good, wonderful that together, if that's all you have. If that's all you have, let's talk heart to heart. And then you go all that place. That's not enough to get the work done. That's not enough to get so saved. That's not enough to heal the sick. That's not enough to raise the dead. 
That's not enough to cast out devils. But when the signs follow, if you will say, as I'm here, all the other things that are provided wonderful, all the other things that I see wonderful. You know, I hate to say this. There's some people, they come to this Congress, and you see they come, I want to see so-and-so. I want to see so-and-so. I heard that the GS brought his wife this time. I want to see, that's all they came for. What, what, what if you see her? And then you go back. All you had at the Congress. Then I went to tell I saw her. I saw her. Good deal for you. Great thing for you. I saw her. That's all you had. Signs and wonders. Everybody says signs and wonders. If you will bury yourself on your bench over there and say, Oh Lord, I will not go except the signs and the wonders and the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon my life. And then you pray and pray until God says, This one means business. It's not come to see this or to see that. It's come to have the power of God in his life. It's not come to, you know, just uh, do like we used to do before and say what we used to say before and just, uh, how are you over there in that section? And then I visit the kitchen. I see that you know, there's improvement here. I want to see all those uh, buildings they just built now. I want, if that's all you see. And then you go, no wonder. That in all that location will be coming from Congress to Congress, Congress after Congress, and nothing is changing. This time, something is going to change. That these signs shall follow them that believe. And then says that Jesus went on and he said, When you say shall follow them in my name, they shall cast out devils. If you know you came out of this place and then you begin to cast out devils, the work will grow. Souls will be saved. People are going to be healed. And something will happen. It will happen in Jesus' name. And then what it says, and they shall speak with new tongues. And then it says, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick. And what will happen? They shall recover. What if you don't have that in the next Think about that. Think about that. What if in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, nothing happens? The same old dry stuff. Acts chapter 3, what if that man at the beach of the gate never rose up the same old dry stuff? Acts chapter 4, what if the boldness and the assault that came upon Peter never happened? The same old dry stuff. What if in chapter 5, and as the survivor that came with all their lies and everything, what if nothing happens? No discovery, no gift of the Spirit. What if nothing happened? What if the shadow of Peter never healed anybody? Uh, the same old stuff in Acts chapter 4, chapter 8. What if Samaria did not turn to the Lord with great signs and wonders? In chapter 9, what if Doctors did not rise from the dead. In chapter 10, what if the Holy Ghost did not come upon the house of Cornelius? And it's the same old stuff, old stuff that we just had. Nothing would have happened, but I'm saying that this time, as the signs and the wonders will follow us, something will happen in Jesus' name. That's the promise the Lord has given. And He said, This I shall follow them that believe and be believer. I said, I'm a believer. And then all those signs will follow us and the great work of the Lord will be done in Jesus' name. Look at this in verse 14. It says, and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with what? Signs following. That's how the work was done. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ promised him in John chapter, chapter 14. John chapter 14, I'm reading there from verse 12. Jesus said, we are to present the partakers, present the partakers of the signs and wonders. It says in John chapter 14 verse 12, it says, And uh, very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. It may good, amen. Well, hold on, hold on. But now, if you think about this, what if we all went here and Jesus came to remember 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. 400 years, silent years, dark years, no prophet, no vision, no power, no miracle, no healing. 400 years in the land of Israel between Malachi and Matthew. And then Jesus showed up. And then he showed up in the temple. He read Isaiah chapter 6 to 1. And then he called and said, This day, this is fulfilled in your ears. And then he began to demonstrate it. And then multitudes began to follow our time. What if the works I do, he shall do. What if you have that part with him? What if you have that anointing? A man, a woman. And then you forget whatever it is you came to see. And say, This is the only thing I really want now. The same thing that Jesus Christ promised, that the works I do, you shall do. And then, what if he gives you that power? I said, what if he gives you that power? Can he give you? 
Can you give me? And if you're serious, if you just pay yourself on that bench and say, Lord, this is the day and this is the week. This one, this Congress, I must have this. And then you go back where you came from, from the boss that you are going. You know, somebody has any problem, you just lay hands on them, the work they did your dream. And then you get down there, and then the works, you say the name, you say the bank, you say all this, and the works I did, you, you know, you shall do. You know, I'm not talking about innocent times, testimonies uh, in a church. I, I wonder, you know, if you have any testimony, can you come over here and get as well? And you, you can hear the test, and you can see the kind of testimony that people are giving. I am so and so. And sometimes I even doubt the names they're given. When they say I'm so and so, and then and they start and they're telling stories. And you can, if you have spiritual eyes to see, if you have mind to see, and to perceive, you are saying, is that a real testimony? Or are we just making out something that it, we're even making fun of testimonies and really equal testimonies? And if you're like that, and I, you know, you're just, everything is so superficial. And I'm saying, don't these people want signs and wonders from this day? Things are going to change. I said, things are going to change. We don't even need people to, you know, come out and give this money, come out and do anything. We we'll see, you see that blind man there, and then they just touch him, their eyes get to, you know, need to invite him and interview him. Everybody can see. You see that man there on the wheelchair, the fellow rises up and he was, you see that man has been dead for two days, and then the people are crying and mourning, and then you are passing, what's happening? They are crying and mourning because somebody, and then you go there, and then as you go there, they're looking at you, <laughs> what are you going to do for any man, and you know, a kind deeper life? Have come. It's a century people. It's going to be a century for the Holy Ghost. I said a century for the Holy Ghost. It's a century man. Then you go that way. They are, they are a century century. You say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the fellow says, hey, where am I? And the fellow is up. You don't need to, uh, if you have this man come up here, they won't, they won't say come up here. Everybody will say, I saw him. I saw when it happened. That power is coming up for your life. That's why it says, very, very less so to you. He that believes on me, the works I do. The time of shallow things, they're going. And the time of all these artificial testimonies, they're going from the midst of this church in Jesus' name. And then the works I do shall do, and greater works than these shall do, because I go to the Father. Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, that's why I came, that's why I came, that's why I came, that's why I'm here. I want that power. I want that authority. I want that anointing to come upon my life. The Lord is saying, you are the present day partaker, the present day partaker, the present day partaker. That the Lord wants to shower His blessings upon that he wants to do that in your life, and you'll do it if you really mean business before the Lord. And you say, Oh Lord, here am I, here am I, here am I. And you come for any other thing they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary, and they shall walk, and they shall not faint. Go to be a new year, because they go to the new power. Go to the new year because they go to the new anointing. In the year because we go to the new authority, the fair power of the people of God that will fill your heart or your soul or your mind. You come to the Lord and say, Lord, I want that power. Oh Lord, I want that authority. Oh Lord, I want that anointing. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait. They that wait upon the Lord. Shall we need their strength? The amount of those that go that command to us with wings as eagles. Those are the people that no persecution will shake them. Those are the people, no trouble will shake them. Those are the people, no problem will disorganize them because of the power, the anointing that they carry. You can carry that anointing to them and say, Oh Lord, I come. Oh Lord, I come. All my soul, all my mind, all my spirit, I come. I lay everything upon the altar. Whatever price I have to pay, whatever price I have to pay, whatever price I have to pay, I want this power, this power, this power. This anointing, anointing of the Holy Ghost, anointing of power, anointing of authority, that God will begin to do something new, something new, something new in your life, in your ministry, that in that local church, all the dryness will vanish away. 
all the superficiality will vanish away. All those sins that are just very moral will just go from day to day. And then there is nothing moving. There is nothing going. All that sin will vanish away. And you say, Oh Lord, here we are today. Oh Lord, here we are today. We're looking for your power. We're seeking for your power. And the Lord is saying, the prevailing prayer, the prevailing prayer, the prevailing prayer for signs and wonders to come in your life. To come in your ministry, to come in your family, to come in your ministration, prevailing prayer, prevailing prayer. Like Jacob prayed, I will not let you go, except you anoint me, except you empower me, except you anoint me with your power, I will not let you go. I will not let you go, except I experience once again, a new feeling of the Holy Ghost. A new authority of the Holy Ghost, a new power of the Holy Ghost. I will not let you go. Oh Lord, here I am. Oh Lord, here I am. I want the power once again. I want the anointing once again. I want the authority once again. I want the impartation in my life, in my ministry once again. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. That's why you're praying. You come to just stay here. You come to just look at this side. See, you come to just. I want to see her. I want to see him. I want to see building. I want to see land. I want to see this and that. I want to see, want to see my old friends. You come for that. You came so that the power of the Lord will work in your life. He will see the power of the Almighty God. Prevailing power of the Almighty God. Unlimited power of the Almighty God to fill your heart. To saturate your heart, to turn you around, to do something, to do something that had never been done. You tell the Lord, tell the Lord, the kind of anointing that breaks every yoke, the kind of anointing that destroys the works of the devil, the kind of anointing that makes a man out of you, the kind of anointing that strengthens your inner man, the kind of anointing that gives you that boldness, supernatural boldness, and fearlessness. You are telling the Lord, oh Lord, that's why I came here, that's why I came here. I want that supernatural thing, I want that supernatural thing. All the previous years, what miracles took place, and they really miracles, not make believe miracles. All the past years, what signs and wonders did you see? I don't mean that those, those uh, kind of superficial things, dry things. We're talking about something new. We're talking about something new. What kind of things took place in your ministry? You're asking the Lord, Oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. Anointing and power and authority that breaks every yoke that makes you a different man, makes you a different woman. And you're telling the Lord, Oh Lord, I need that. Oh Lord, I need that. Or the faith you the day of adversity. Or the faith you the days of adversity. Or the faith you the days of adversity. But now the Lord is saying, Get up in the strength of the Lord. Get up in the mind of the Holy Ghost and go in praise your new strength in the new year so that you can be expressed for the Almighty God. The Lord is saying, Get up. Get up. Rise up. It is time. Time is going. Time is going. Rise up and say, Oh Lord, here am I. I present myself in a candidate. A candidate for that new anointing. A candidate for that new power. A candidate for that new authority. A candidate for that Holy Ghost power to come upon my life. They were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there's a mighty wind from heaven. Suddenly there was a new tongue of fire that came upon everyone. And they began to speak in tongues and speak with them utterance. And then everywhere they went, everywhere they went, power, everywhere they went, anointing, everywhere they went, healing, everywhere they went, signs and wonders. And the Lord is saying, it is time once again, it is time once again that the church of the living God will wait upon the Lord. It is time once again that the people of God will wait upon Him and say, Oh Lord, where are the signs you promised us? Because He says, shall follow them that believe. I am a believer. I am a believer. I am a believer. And I want the signs to follow. Look at me. I want the signs to follow. I want the signs to follow. If that's all you get in this Congress, if that's all you have in this Congress, if that's all you're able to possess in this Congress, the signs and the wonders are taught to follow the believers. That will be a wonderful Then You can go to your location. You can go to your local church. You can go to your region. You can go to your state. You can go to your nation. And then you can evangelize that nation with signs and wonders. With the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, you are telling the Lord, Holy Lord, I am ready. Oh Lord, I am ready. Oh Lord, I am ready. It is that readiness, it is that readiness that makes us to pray like we never prayed before. That makes us to believe like we never believed before. That makes us to expect like we never expected before. And we're saying, Oh Lord, this is my time. 
This is my day. Something must happen to me. Something must happen to me. The new zeal, the new power, the new fire, the new authority, the new anointing, the Holy Ghost anointing coming upon your life. The Lord will say, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait, they that wait, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those are the people that go to Mount of Offense as eagles and they're going to walk, they're not going to faint, they're going to run, and they're not going to be weary. The Lord is calling you, Why don't you at this time take your opportunity? Why don't you at this time take your chance? Why don't you at this time say, Oh, Lord, this is what I want, this is what I need? The church needs it. The church needs it. The world needs it. Everybody around you needs it. They need for you to be strong. They need for you to have the power. They need for you to have the authority. And they need for you to be able to have this anointing upon your life. So that anywhere you go, anywhere you go, you touch the sick, they are healed. You touch the dead, they are raised. You touch the demon possessed. And then they, they become totally neighbor. The Lord is waiting for the church. The Lord is waiting for the church. That there is anointing that they are promised that will give unto you that will come in before the Lord. So, Lord, do as you have said. Oh, Lord, do as you have said. Oh, Lord, do as you have said. That, Lord, you are giving me this anointing, this power, this Holy Ghost, and you are giving me these signs and wonders, and the signs will come again. And the signs will come again to his church. And the power will come once again to his church. Not just a dry old stuff will be passing on that has not been able to evangelize the world, that has not been able to revive the church. Oh, Lord, do it again. Oh, Lord, do it again. Oh, Lord, do it again. Tell the Lord who will do it. Tell the Lord, he will do. Tell the Lord what we are doing. He's given us a promise already. Ask the beginning unto you. See, the shall find. Knock, he shall be open to everyone that has to receive it. He that seeketh, findeth unto him that knocketh, it shall be opened. The Lord has given us a promise. Tell me, he is a faithful God, he is a covenant keeping God. He will do what he has said, he will do. If you will call upon him, the effectual covenant prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, effectual fervent prayer, effectual fervent prayer, effectual fervent prayer, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It will avail in your life, it will prevail in your life, it will avail in your church, it will prevail in your church, it will avail in your community to prevail your community. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, prevaileth much, it will prevail when you stand in the strength of the Lord, you stand in the authority of the Lord, you stand according to the promise of and of the Lord and you say, Oh Lord, this is what I need. Oh Lord, this is what I need. Oh Lord, this is what I need. The Lord will do. The Lord will do. The church needs the signs and the wonders today. The ministers need the signs and the wonders today. The workers need the signs and the wonders today. The men and the women, we need the signs and the wonders today. The preachers and the pastors, we need the signs and the wonders today. The evangelists, the teachers, we need the signs and the wonders today. Tell the Lord, we need the signs and the wonders. Jesus a teacher, a teacher of signs and wonders, a evangelist, a evangelist of signs and wonders, a shepherd, a pastor, a pastor, a shepherd of signs and wonders, an apostle, an apostle with signs and wonders, a prophet, a prophet with signs and wonders, a king, a king of signs and wonders. He was the very son of God, the son of signs and wonders. The Lord is telling us that's what you need today, that's what I need today, that's what the church needs today, and the Lord is calling the church, and the Lord is saying, Come, and I will give it to you. Then we'll see our signs once again, we'll see the power once again, we'll see the anointing once again, we'll see the Holy Ghost once again, manifesting and moving. You pray until the power comes upon your life, you pray until that anointing comes again, you pray until God will open the windows of heaven and it will shower, it's anointing, it's power, the assumption upon your life, and you will say, I will not let you go except you, you fear me, except you baptize me, except you elevate me, except you energize me, in the power of the Holy Ghost, let it happen once again, let it happen once again, let it happen once again, seek the face of the Lord, seek the face of the Lord, seek the Lord, and then you will do what your promise will be in your life, seek the Lord, seek the Lord, seek the Lord, with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, seek the Lord, and do everything upon the altar, and say, oh Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, I'm seeking you, and I want this power, I want this anointing, I want this function, and the Lord says, he will do it. He says, he will do it. He says, everyone that has to receive it, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Why don't you say, oh Lord, this is what I want. 
I'm going back out of this Congress with the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I'm going back out of this Congress with the unction. I'm going back with the infilling. I'm going back with the indwelling. And the Lord will do it to your life. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. And say, Oh Lord of Jacob, I will not let you go. Except the signs and the wonders. I said they come back to my life. I said they come back to my church. I said they come back to this ministry. I will not let you go. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, they all came together, they all came together, they all came together. And we took up their voice before the Lord and prayed. And after that prayer, after that prayer, great boldness, great power, great authority came upon them. And great signs and wonders were done by the leaders in the church.